Good evening, YouTube investors. This is Steve from the Stock Market Shark YouTube channel. A huge welcome to all of you, and especially those ones who are watching my videos for the first time. Guys, today I'm going to talk about Alibaba company ticker BABA. I bring you some updates, I'm bringing you some news, and in a joint effort with you, I'm attempting to figure out how these updates are going to impact the stock price in the upcoming period. But before we start, Please take a moment and smash the subscribe button just below my video and turn on the notification bell in order to not miss any of my future stock research, my stock analysis and updates <clears throat> on the stock market. No pressure, guys, but I think it's definitely worth it. Let's bring this community together. Let's exchange ideas, trading strategies, and let's support each other in trading on a daily basis. If you subscribe, thanks for doing so. And now let's kickstart our discussion on Alibaba. I'm going to keep it short and sweet, guys, because your time is precious to me. At the end of the video, you would get the most essential updates and you would be up to speed with what's going on with Bubble Stock. Guys, a few, few weeks ago, I published a video in which I attempted to give a fair value to Alibaba. I'm going to insert the link to this video right below this one, so you would, be, you would be able to follow the details of my research. But what's important to us is that even in the most pessimistic scenario, I run three different scenarios, a bearish one, a neutral one, and a bullish case. Even in the most pessimistic scenario, the fair intrinsic value that was resulted by the most pessimistic set of conditions was 170 US dollars. Guys, currently bubble stock trades at 115 US dollars. The stock is up almost 3% today, and um, it's, it has been traded with an average volume. The stock is still moving in a negative downtrend, and we don't really see the turnaround yet. But these models, my models, signal that basically the stock is traded with a significant discount compared to its fair intrinsic value, even if you take into account the most negative, most pessimistic set of assumptions. And I haven't told you even a single word about my bull case. Guys, what I want to dis examine today is if my model is supported by the thoughts, by the ideas, by the research of other analysts. So what we are going to do is review uh, the latest analyst updates, the latest analyst price targets related to Alibaba, and show you guys if they are in line with my valuation, if they support my valuation. A little bit of spoiler, they, they, are, they are supporting my valuation, but let's look into the details to find out what's going on with the stock. There's an interesting phenomenon going on with Alibaba. At the same time, when the analysts are cutting the price targets one by one, they are recommending the stock for an overweight or buy rating. In the last two months, the stock has received three price target updates. Two of these were basically a price target cut and one analyst has left the price target untouched. The most recent one was a Needham uh, analyst who was basically who was recommending the stock for a buy and he was cutting the price target from 230 US dollars to 180 US dollars. A little bit before, a little bit before Christmas, Atlantic Equities has given a recommendation of neutral from overweight and has cut the price target from 185 US dollars to 140 US dollars. A little bit before um, in December, uh, McQuire uh, has left the recommendation of outperformed unmodified and also the price target of 162 US dollars unmodified. So as you can guys see the ratings and the price targets received in the last two months range from 140 US dollars to 180 US dollars. So as we see, the rating of the analysts are pretty much in consensus. They are in line with each other. And they are also supporting my model that has given a fair intrinsic value of 170 US dollars. This means that even taking into, taking into account the more and more pessimistic projections related to the downturn of the Chinese economy and the weak performance expected in the Chinese e-commerce sector and the discretionary consumption. And additionally, adding to these assumptions, the regulatory risk around Alibaba, the Chinese Communist Party basically is, is just putting more and more obstacles in front of the company and also the risk of the listing. If we put all these negative assumptions into our model, they still result a way higher fair intrinsic value than the current stock price. And this is exactly what we are looking for when we are looking for good value pick guys. Trades that are stocks that are trading way, be, way below their fair intrinsic value, even if we build in a considerable margin of safety and a negative set of assumptions. I think that after giving this overview, it would just make sense to look behind 
the price target of this analyst and to just try to dive deeper into the reasoning and the background why they've cut the price target and what are the major concerns related to the performance of Alibaba in the upcoming year. I would like to highlight one more analyst rating that has not been reflected in the website because this is very recent. It has been published the day before yesterday. Additionally to the previous ones, another analyst, Scott Devitz from Stiefel or Stiefel Investment is basically cutting the price target from 170 US dollars to 150, still representing an upside of 28% and reiterated the buy rating. Let's see what's the major concern of this analyst for cutting the price target for Alibaba. I highlighted to you guys here, David lowered his current quarter revenue growth estimate to 12.1% from 15.5%. So basically the, he's projecting a lower revenue growth. And he also reduced the forward looking revenue growth estimate to 20% from 21.7%. Just to put all these numbers into context, guys, I wanna flesh up a stat from Alibaba's performance. Alibaba's five-year historical average revenue growth rate was almost 50%. And now we are talking about revenue growth rates of 12% and 20% in the best case. So the bottom line is that the narrative around the stock, so Alibaba is switching from a high growing skyrocketing growth rate stock of 50% into moderately growing um, stock. So this is basically the bottom line and this is highlighted by this concern. There's another analyst, True Securities, analyst Yusef Squali, he also lowered the stock price from 200 uh, to 180. This represents an upside of 54%. The concerns of this analyst were pretty much similar to uh, Scott. So we've seen, seen, seen like a consensus in this regards, what the main risks for Alibaba are. And I would like to look into another rating as well, because that fleshes up another aspect of um, the risks around the performance of the company the next year. So as we can see here, this is the rating of the Atlantic equities. And this analyst says that the major concern for Alibaba is not only the growth rate. Let me highlight this one here for you guys for easier reading. So the main concern for him is the management's commitment to ongoing aggressive investment and discipline in terms of renewed capital allocation. So this analyst is concerned that the company would not invest so aggressively as expected in order to maintain its competitive edge. So this is another aspect around the risks and concerns related to Alibaba in, financial, in the next financial year. And there is another, basically there's another um, analysis and I would like to highlight one more thing here. This was a city analyst giving, um, giving a price target cut to Alibaba. This was coming earlier, so not in the last two months, but I think it's definitely informative to look into the reasoning of this analyst because it highlights a lot of things in, in, in a very granular way of what's going on with Alibaba. So City Analyst says that data shows Chinese online consumption is slowing and that the retail sales decelerated sharply in November. This could hit Alibaba harder than peers because the group is more reliant on discre discretionary spending on the likes of cosmetics. Yep, the analyst from City also cited slowing revenue growth from Alibaba's blockbuster single day sales, even as part of the broader trend. He also says that we believe overall demand sentiment and market conditions will remain soft near term, but nothing that lead up to the Winter Olympics. However, the analyst is upbeat about the reorganization to better integrate platforms like Taobao and Mal. So he says that we are optimistic on the potential enhancement it could bring when the market recovers. Taking all these concerns into consideration, he says, let me highlight this here, that Alibaba is not cheap enough to buy. And this has been reflected by the accelerating momentum among investors rushing to buy the massive dip in the stock price. His views are shared by many analysts, including Danny Lowe from one of China's biggest investment banks. Low told Barron's that valuation was the first reason investors were buying Alibaba stock of late, followed by other factors, including action from high profile investors and clearing regulatory picture. So as you know, like a lot of high profile investors like Charlie Munger are buying, are building up positions in the stock. So this is the holistic picture guys related to the price target cuts and the ratings received 
uh, by the company recently. And I just want to highlight one more thing before we throw the conclusion and say goodbye to you guys. So guys, the final chart, I want to splash up the institutional ownership in Alibaba. My expectation was that simultaneously with the decreasing stock price, the institutional ownership started to slowly, slowly build up. But eventually this graph shows the opposite. So we don't see any turnaround in the size of the institutional ownership in Alibaba. So they are not opening, they are not building up new positions massively yet. Um, eventually this was a surprise and I expected the opposite, but eventually if you think about it a little bit deeper, this is exactly what we are looking for. So we wanna be a little bit faster than, uh, than the big players in, in the industry. We want to take positions before the market takes the turn because those situations are going to result the most massive profits on the long term. So I think guys that this is a very good opportunity to basically consider entering Alibaba and building up a position before the big fishes start to do so. So I hope you enjoy my video. I hope it gave you an insight of what's going on with Alibaba and I hope it supports your trading strategy. Um, if you like this video and you, will, you would like to receive notifications about similar content, uh, please make sure that you eventually subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future updates because guys are coming with essential data analysis and essential research on the stock market on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to see you the ones who subscribe to my channel. So take care and uh, see you very soon. Enjoy the weekend till then. Cheers everyone and bye.